You know what I am? A problem solver. I take out the trash. I remove those hard to get at stains. Oh, let's just put it this way. I'm a people person. Job's done. Relax. I'm watching your back. The only reason I have a partner, right? Right. Dad? Are you okay? My partner was clipped. You gave me your word. You're getting out of that business. This is the last time. I'll never do this again. Taylor Kwan, WDCPD. I thought I smelled a cop. I'm not interested in some disposable hired hitter. I want the guys who took out your partner. What are you gonna do, bring out some kung fu from the homeland? I was born in Florida. Alright people, I'm here to give you your review for Bullet in the Head. Oh man, you know, I, the first thing I had to ask myself when I sat down, I had a choice between seeing this or Warm Bodies tonight. And, I mean, I'm still going to go see Warm Bodies, but with this movie, this movie selection for this week, I, I really had a tough decision. And I was like, well, you know what, I missed, this, uh, I missed the screening for uh, Warm Bodies, so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and go see you know, Bullet in the Head. Yeah, and, and and when I sat down in the theater and I, and I was ready, I was getting myself mentally like you know in the place to sit here and watch this movie objectively, and a, something happened. A question was posed in my head, and that question was, in light of all the '80s throwback movies we've been getting over the last few years. Uh, from Rambo to Premium Rush to Rocky Balboa to, I, I mean, just even the Red Dawn remake. I mean, we've been getting a lot of movies, in over, and that's not all of them, but we're gonna, we've gotten a lot of movies over the last few years that were all about the, you know, the 80s vibe, bringing back that 80s good old-fashioned action, you know, giving you that 48 hours, that tango and cash, you know, and I had to ask myself, is that really a bad thing? And you know what? I got the answer for you. It is not. This is probably one of the better movies I've seen in a while when it comes to action. And I'm going to go ahead and preface this now and say this is not a, a an Oscar you know, nominated movie. This is not going to be a movie that you're that, that the Academy is going to go. Yes, Stallone's acting was a tour de force. No, we will not say that. We we will not say that. Oh, the script and the dialogue were just spot on. We will not ever say that. But one thing we will say is this movie is fucking fun. And you know, I, I get I get a lot of shit from other people that I know. Because when they ask me my opinion of a movie, you know, it always comes down to one thing. Oh, you just don't know how to have fun. No, I do know how to have fun. It's just that I like what I'm having fun to involve something fun. And this movie is exactly that. I went into this movie thinking, hmm, it's probably going to be dumb. It's. A, I know this is a throwback to the 80s. I know exactly where this movie is trying to take me. I mean, because you got to think about it. Let's go ahead and get the particulars out of the way. This movie is directed by Walter Hill. He was brought in to take care of this movie and take care of this, you know, the, this project. And, I mean, let's go ahead and go over the credits real quick because this will let you know, just based on the fact that he was brought into this picture, what you're going to get. The man directed uh, the Driver, The Warriors, fucking 48 Hours, another 48 Hours, Red Heat with, with fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger, for Christ's sakes. The man knows big, dumb 80s movies. The man knows how to do it. Almost every movie he's ever done has had that kind of style to it. So, going into this, I'm thinking, alright, cool. What's the cast looking like? We got Sylvester Stallone, which, okay... If you don't know who he is, you're living under a rock, and you should probably kill yourself. Uh, we got, you know, Jason Momoa, who, I don't know if you guys watched Stargate or Game of Thrones, or you saw that shitty Conan remake, that's who Jason Momoa is. And I mean, I like the guy, because he's a good actor, he just, I think he has trouble picking the right stuff. But Game of Thrones really showed how you can use this man to good effect, because, let's face it, 
him playing Khal Drogo, he played a better Conan in Game of Thrones than he did in Conan. <laughs> uh, and then we have one of my favorite uh, names to try to pronounce and butcher. Uh, and okay, <clears throat> let's get see if we can get this right. Adewal Akinoye Ajbahe. I, yeah, we have, yeah. Anyway, Triple A, Mr. Echo, the man himself is in this movie, and he's doing. Something not entirely different than... I mean, he usually plays sinister characters. He usually plays sleazy characters. And that's about what he's doing here. Only instead of being the the physical and imposing guy, he's actually kind of more the slimy guy. You know, the weaselly guy. That's who he is. We also have a return of uh, Christian Slater, which I haven't seen this guy in a movie that was worth a shit in forever. But you know what? He He's not even in the movie for like, I don't even want to say his collective total might be five minutes. But, I mean, he was used well enough. But, I mean, this is really going to be, you know, this is really going to be Sylvester Stallone's movie and Sung Kang's movie. Who, for Sung Kang, if you guys ever saw Tokyo Drift or uh, or Fast Five or anything like that, that's him. He played Han in those movies. Now... With Bullet in the Head, here's here's basically the premise for this movie. And this is not and like I said, this is without really dropping a dime. This movie is about a guy named Jimmy Bobo. That's Sylvester Sloan's character. And basically he's this he's this cat who has a job as a you know, a, a down and dirty hitman. He has a partner who goes in on these hits with him. Who I want to say is a guy I haven't seen in a movie in quite some time, and that's John Seda. I, I want to say I want to say the last thing I saw him in. I think the last movie. I think really the last thing I I saw him in was like Undisputed. Now that I think about it, the basic the basic premise here is that they go in to take out a guy. It's their job. Go in, quick, clean, kill, get the fuck out of Dodge. Sylvester Stallone as Jimmy Bobo has a strike of conscious, and there's a witness at the scene. He doesn't know what to do about the situation. Long story short, it comes back to bite him. That's all you really need to know. When he gets away from the scene, his partner is killed by Jason Momoa's character, who plays the mercenary Keegan. The The beauty of this is he pretty much is set out for revenge against this guy. He wants to go after this guy and get him. He wants to get the guy who paid this guy to do the job. He wants to get the guy who handed the money to this guy who paid that guy. He is wanting full-on wholesale murderous revenge. And that's where we go to with this movie. Now, where the connection comes in is that Sun Kane is investigating a case that happens to connect with what's going on with Sylvester Stallone. So you kind of get this buddy cop vibe, like what you would normally find in a movie like 48 Hours, which you got the perfect guy to direct it. The dialogue in the movie between Sun Kane and Sylvester Stallone is not particularly strong, and even Sun Kane's character is not particularly strong. I found myself laughing at his ineptitude a lot of times, and not as an actor, but as his character, uh, the character that he plays in the movie, which his name is Taylor Kwan. I had a hard time thinking, dude, how the fuck are you a cop? There's even a scene where Sylvester Sylvester Stallone says to him, how the fuck did you ever graduate the academy? And that's what I thought about his character. His character was just very, very sheltered and just completely unaware of anything going on around him. And another thing about it too is that with Stallone, Stallone's actually playing more the funny business guy, where Sun Kane is playing more the straight man, and he's playing the straight man so hardcore, I kind of wanted to choke him. If there was any weak point in the movie, it's actually with Sun Kane. But the thing is, Sylvester Stallone, with his muscly arms, is carrying the weight for both of them. Because even the lines that Sun Kane delivers, where I get it, he's kind of supposed to be that this this awkward guy who who really isn't witty. He, he's not really you know quick witted, and Sylvester Stallone is kind of like. Hanging out at the family reunion with your drunk uncle. I mean, that, it, it, not, and I don't mean that just because he talks like this. No, <laughs> I mean, I mean it because of the fact that he's, he just says things that come to mind. It's just like, 
I mean, just remember the last time you were at a family reunion and that really fun, drunk uncle is there and he's just talking shit, saying shit that just should not be said to other people. You know, things that are just completely inappropriate. And that's exactly what Stallone's character is. Another aspect about this movie I really liked was the fact that they kind of play up, I mean, not saying they go full-on noir, but they play noir elements into the movie. I mean, at least as far as like, you know, the main character and his inner monologues, you know, the the narration, even to a degree, the tropes and the way that his character kind of gets by in life. It's very noir centric. But I mean, on the whole, it's still a big, dumb 80s fun action movie. And when I say that, that's not to say it's a bad thing. Look. I I felt this way about The Last Stand. I felt that, oh, I, I, it, it's a good try, but ultimately, not Arnold's best work. I, I, I saw this, thought about it, and thought to myself, you know what? This is one of the better Stallone movies I have seen. And I've seen all of his movies. But when I saw this movie... Two of Stallone's previous films popped into mind, and then two other movies completely unrelated to Stallone, popped into my head. And those two movies that were Stallone-centric were Rocky Balboa and the recent Rambo. And I loved both of those films because I felt like, man, this guy is in here playing a good character. He's playing strong. He's giving us exactly what we want from these characters. And that's what Bullet to the Head is. He is giving us exactly that. Now, the other two movies that popped in my mind were... 48 hours, and another 48 hours, because the idea behind this, behind those movies is not much different than Bullet to the Head. You basically have the convict and the cop, the same idea right here, and the thing is, Walter Hill plays it to, to such great effect, because even though the dialogue is very weak in the beginning, and it's even still weak in the end, but the, it finds its niche. You start really getting used to the characters. I found myself just saying, you know what? I get it. These guys, after a while, I can tell the difference between bad acting and the way a character is supposed to be played. And there's not really that... I mean, as far as bad acting goes, yeah, there is some in here. But as far as the way the character's supposed to be, this is exactly what they're supposed to be, and I totally get it. I'm on board. The only one bad thing, like, actual critique thing I can say about this movie that's a negative is the fact that it kind of takes a minute to to really get on board with it. I mean, it's a little slow going. I mean, granted, yeah, the action in it is very solid, but it takes a minute to to really loosen up with it. Sylvester Stallone as Jimmy Bobo, absolutely amazing. I really liked what he did. I I was really on board with what he was, you know, what the charisma he brought to it, the the way he delivered the dialogue. Uh, I mean, the the action scenes in it were great, especially between him and Jason Momoa. Uh, and Jason Momoa, I liked him because he kind of. I mean, granted, we get a lot of these types of characters now. Yes, ever since The Dark Knight came out, the Hollywood's become really obsessed with giving you villains who just don't give a fuck. And that is what Jason Momoa's character is. He's... I mean, I'm not saying he's the, the the cackling joker or anything like that. But, I mean, the idea behind his character is that he does not give a fuck. And that's exactly what they want to portray. And Jason Momoa gave you that in spades. And I like the way it was done. Christian Slater and and, uh, and Mr. Echo, I thought they did a good job. Christian Slater, I mean, he was basically being, well, I mean, insert a random Christian Slater character. I mean, that's exactly who he was. Now, as far as Mr. Echo goes, I really liked it. I mean, it wasn't necessarily a change or anything I've never seen him you know, do before as far as playing a villain goes. But I kind of liked that he was able, they, they didn't take the easy out with his character and make him the big, tough, imposing, uh, kingpin type of character. They actually played him more to be kind of a a slimy, weaselly, weak type of bad guy in the sense that he uses his brain and his wallet and his pocketbook to do his dirty work for him instead of like where we're used to seeing him in shit like Oz where it's like, oh, I'm the big badass. You know, I got a brain, but I use my muscles, you know, to do my my dirty work. And I, and I thought that was a good change. Uh, the only other actor I don't think I really talked anything about was Sarah Shahi. And I, and I, I really don't say anything about her because she's really hardly in the movie. And when she's there, she's good. But, I mean, she's probably the most 
where you get most of your emotion in the movie from. But ultimately, I mean, she's really there as a plot device, which there's nothing wrong with that. Because if you watch any 80s movies, then the women that are in them are usually there as a plot device only anyway. So it doesn't really matter. But, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say right now, I'm probably going to catch a little flack for this. And a lot of people are probably going to disagree with me. But I can't help but say that, I mean, I enjoyed this movie. I recognize its faults. I recognize that, you know, it's not, it's got a, it's got a paper thin plot and a ham sandwich budget. But the thing is, that's what we had in the 80s. And that's exactly what they were trying to do. And if I had to stack this up against any 80s movie I've ever seen, I'd have to say that I enjoy it quite a bit. I mean, I cannot think of any uh, of anything bad to say about it other than those those things, those grievances I've already stated. And if I had to rate this movie just right now off the top of my head, the first thing I would say is that this movie is a must-see on the big screen. I mean, I mean, granted, it's probably not one of those movies that like I will you know go back and buy on Blu-ray or anything like that. I mean, if I do, I mean it'll probably be down the road if I catch it on a sale but I mean ultimately I do think it's something you should see on the big screen I really I really feel that it has a lot to offer as far as like it's action and yeah and just the really big moments in it that's my review so like I said keep it real with me like I keep it real with you let me know what's going on in the comment section tickle that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the new content I swear to you when I get this guy it's gonna be bad <laughs> Do you mind if we uh, listen to something from this century? I can't let you go on some killing spree! No! It's gonna sound like a broken record. They don't even make records anymore. Great. You and me, family one unfinished business to take care of. You get a fight or you plan on boring me to death. <laughs> I know, I've heard the speech. We should have taken him in. Don't trust anybody. That's how you stay in the game. Bang. Down. Owned.